Welcome to EDC Journeys. If you enjoy the video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Enjoy! What's going on EDC people and what's our journey this time? We are talking about the SOG SOG Mini Salute in black. Let me apologize in advance for the big shadow. The sun is setting behind me. I tried to hold an umbrella and start this and uh, it was awfully hard to do anything to review this while uh, I was holding an umbrella. So we are reviewing the, oh by the way the neighbor's walking around in a T-Rex costume um, roaring so if you hear random screaming or Jurassic Park noises that's what's happening in this neck of the woods. So it's the SOG Salute Mini and we're going to go over it. I've been, uh, I haven't been carrying it in my pocket every day, but I definitely have been reviewing it. I've been using it around the house, around the yard. Uh, it is now dulled. It came sharp. Uh, so that should tell you something, but we'll get to that. Uh, the uh, first I want to talk about, uh, you know, like, like every review, let me put that down there for a sec. Um, yeah, so the first, oh, there he goes with the Jurassic Park noises. Um, okay, first off, length. Um, I, I'll tell you what the website says, or what, you know, what I find online. It's 7.1 inches overall. Yeah, I, you know, uh, we're, we're going to go with the website specs. I, I don't have my ruler handy like I thought I did, and my caliper is not quite long enough uh, to do it. It's a 6-inch caliper, so... We will do everything but the overall length. Overall, 7.1 inches. The blade is... Well, that's the cutting edge, but they probably count. A cool 3.1. Uh, and closed. We have four point oh six, so four inches. Okay. So, uh, weight. The website said three point six ounces, which is a hundred and two grams. We are going to start in grams. I get ninety eight point one. Um, uh, that's a difference of about four grams. Okay, well, ounces. It says 3.6, and I'm getting 3.46. Not a big difference, but it could be labeled a little lighter. Uh, okay, so, let's talk blade. The blade is obviously coated in black. Um, it is 8CR13MOV which you will not find on here that I can see but I did look it up and for sure that's what it is uh, they label it two different ways uh, on the SAW website when you look through the description it, it's labeled as a Bowie but uh, later they refer to it as a drop point in the spec of specifications I see it certainly more as a drop point but I, I guess you can kind of get a little bit of a Bowie-ish here but yeah, I, I, I definitely see a drop point there. Um, I'm trying to... Is it, man, is it hard to see through my camera with the sun? There we go, that's better. Uh, there's kind of a reverse swedge. It kind of goes in this way. Maybe that's why I like refer to it sometimes as a Bowie right here. Um, almost making it... Almost. Almost. Making it a clip point. And the grind is a hollow grind. Okay. So the handle... Let me back up a little bit. I'm like right at the camera. The handle is black G10, obviously. Uh, it is. It's got full steel liners. Let me see if I can see. Man, I might have to get that umbrella back. It's got full steel liners. Hopefully, you guys can see this because I really can't. Um, it has. Man, that is hard to see. Okay, yeah, it has a partial backspacer up until the back lock, 
Uh, you see the full steel liners with what they call scalloped jimping here. We'll talk about that again in a minute. The depth, meaning the from the tallest point that I can measure to the cutting apex is about 23.5 millimeters. Um, then of course I measure from the flat to the bot to the apex again and get about 13.6 millimeters. So it's a it's a good thing that the uh, you know it's not that tall of a blade, so it's a really great idea to have a, a, a hollow grind on a blade this short, especially with such a long flat along this way. You know you only have uh, when you only have 13.6 millimeters to cut with. Uh, you know, hollow is kind of the way to go. So I don't know if they had much choice there. But anyways, uh, the choil, I got 2.96 millimeters as a thickness. Now I'll try to show it to you. At the thickest part, I measure, if, it's, if anyone's curious, 2.96. And, and it has a very steep drop down to the actual, uh, uh, you know, sharpening choil area. And that would be right here at the sharpening choil. Man. Maybe I shouldn't do this at this time of day or at this location. Um, and while we're on the topic of choil, it does have a sharpening choil right here. It's definitely not a finger choil at all. It is a sharpening choil, but it's a decent one. And because you have a hollow grind, you're going to get a, a decently thin edge as you continue to sharpen up the knife. But to start with, you get a, a fair, fair size sharpening choil. Uh, ergos. Okay, here's where it gets interesting. Let me rearrange myself here. I'll use my left hand. I got this big tripod handle in my way. I've got to figure out a new way to mount my camera. That'll probably help. Ergos. I'm using this left-handed. I am not left-handed. Just realized that. Ergos, uh, well, what's the best thing it's got for it going for it? It's got this adjustable thumb stud. Let me see if I can sh put a shade over it. Yeah, there we go. Where if you turn that flathead, it will push the thumb stud either forward or backwards, depending on your 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 hand size and where you like to deploy from. Um, other than that, uh, it's got a, it does have a contoured bottom, so you know it kind of it's not it's as opposed to a neutral uh, blade like a well for example the Civivi Elementum. Um, I would call a, sorry I had to grab it, I would call more of a neutral handle where you can kind of grab it where you'd like, in a, including the forward choil, but you know really you can hold it however you please uh, and your fingers can go wherever. Where this one has those, like many knives, um, areas that your fingers are kind of forced to go and now they are it is con in, uh, chamfered so it is a little bit more comfortable it's just I don't like being locked in now being locked in in that position this jimping and the ramping is nice okay however this I told you I'd get, get back to you about the scalloped liners yeah uh, I'm not a fan of that I know that that is jimping and it's grippy or whatever I do not, it definitely to me is is not comfortable whatsoever. Um, and if you look at the back, you can kind of see through these little holes here, That that's part of the liner. Those on the back of your hand, that, it, it hurts my finger, like that's a hot spot. It's not the clip, it's this part, this, this liner area here. Um, so, you know, it, uh, it is a lockback. And I'm not a huge fan of lockbacks, but you know they have they have their place. You can roll it out. It's definitely not a flick knife, at least for me. That's about as far as hard as I can flick it. This was one that was given to me by Big Red EDC to review, and I believe he said, he, "Ooh, I got it out." So maybe you know, if you really know just how to do it, and this is your one knife, and and you do it often, you might be able to do that. But uh, I don't know. The lockback, you know, for a work knife is is great. It's a strong lock. 
Yeah, see, I can't do it. It's a strong lock mechanism, but I, I hate the ergos so much on this that it's it's taking away from the in, anything that's good, to be honest with you, as far as the handle goes. Now they they say you know you, it is a reversible uh, clip, so you left you do have lefty love. Um, it is you know lower deep carry, even though the liners those beautiful huge liners stick up higher than it for some reason. Uh, it is that looped clip design which I like. And Let's see it here, I, it's either Teflon or stainless steel liners. I'd be willing to bet it's Teflon. Yeah, it's got Teflon liners, that which can be okay, okay for a work knife. Uh, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but action, there's really none to speak of, especially as a lockback. Not my favorite. Uh, overall, what do I think? It's $32, it's 8CR, it's... Uh, uh, if you can go to a store and hold this knife and you find it comfortable and you like the design then that's not a reason unreasonable price but to blindly go into it not knowing having really no great action um, knowing that this is probably going to be a hot spot having 8 CR steel when you can get 440C or D2 for twenty dollars ish. Uh, uh, I, I think it's an outdated design, uh, outdated pricing, to be honest. It's an old knife. I'm not. This isn't. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm new to this game, so I I'm not uh, the uh, newest person to or the first person to review this. What else can I tell you? The partial backspacer. Yeah, that's good, especially on a work knife. Um, you know, the lock. I don't want to say too many negative things. If you are a hard worker, if you work in construction or something, you just need a, a you know a, a good cutting knife that's that's sturdy. That has, you know the lock back is going to be strong. The 8CR is going to allow you to sharpen it up or strop it up again nicely. It's tacked out in all black. You know, so for those people, I guess it works. It, it's not for me. I can tell you that now. So, uh, if I were to give it a rating, instead of thumbs up, I'll use clovers. Uh, I would give it one out of three clovers. Why am I even giving it one? Well, because it's it, it's it can be sharpened very. It has a sharpening coil. Uh, they did think about that. Uh, while I don't like lockbacks, lockbacks have their place. Uh, it is G10 and not FRN handle, and it has an adjustable thumb stud. So for the and, it, and it's got full liners despite the dreaded ending. Um, for so for, for those reasons, it'll get a it'll get a clover or a shamrock, but uh, it's not getting any more than that for me at this point. That is my nutshell version review of the SOG Salute Mini, guys. Uh, more content to come, especially tomorrow. Today is Saturday, tomorrow is Sunday. That means I have a good full day of uh, recording to do, and it is going to be on 440C as far as my plans go for now. So, sorry the uh, review wasn't... Oh, just let me give you some comparisons, just since that's what people do. Uh, here's a Kershaw Leak. Again, uh, it's black and it has a hollow and semi-similar length blade. That's why I'm choosing that. Uh, here's CVV Elementum. Doesn't really much compare. But just to give you an idea of the size, I'll, I'll com you know, a lot of people know the Elementum, so... You know, you're as far as cutting edge, you're longer, uh, but you have a much longer, shallower, hollow cut grind with the elementum, and it's whatever. Um, so there you go. Sorry, it's my first uh, not so great review, but it's gonna happen, guys. 
I think $32 for that knife is uh, overpriced. I'm sorry. Have a great day. As I mentioned, the knife is now completely dull, so I will be doing an 8CR13 MOV sharpening this evening. Uh, I do not know if I will film any of it, but I will show you the results of it tomorrow. It is absolutely dull currently, and uh, hopefully will be razor sharp by tomorrow. Hey, thanks for watching my review. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. For more content like this and other knife EDC content, consider subscribing and then hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Have a great day.